for more on this, let's go to Christian Leuprecht, a senior expert at the Royal Military College of Canada. He joins us now from Kingston, Ontario. Christian, thanks so much for joining us. First, let me ask you how likely you think it is that this humanitarian corridor will actually be established. Well, neither Russia nor the United States favor this corridor, uh, in part because it, of course, creates facts on the ground, and that's, I think, partially why Turkey does favor it, because, of course, it's not just a way to resolve some of the humanitarian crisis and relieve some of the incredible uh, pressure on Turkey with regards to its refugees, but it would also allow much greater control for Turkey over everything that happens along that border uh, and across that border, and that's precisely why many of the factions are concerned about creating the corridor. On the other hand, of course, uh, depending on how many refugees now stream towards the border, it may, in fact, just create facts on the ground, and it's going to force all the parties to act. And if uh, parties such as Daesh or the Al-Nusra Front start to engage in large-scale humanitarian uh, massacres, uh, for instance, of, of refugees or of, uh, of quasi-genocidal conduct, uh, it's quite possible that the international mood uh, may switch very quickly and that people will say something has to be done to safeguard uh, those tens of thousands of lives that are just trying to escape from the fighting. Absolutely. Christian, when you hear the Saudis saying this conflict will not end if Assad does not leave, on top of the Russians backing Assad at all costs, where do you think that leaves any real prospects for resolution of this conflict? So, look, I think this is partially the Saudis that go negotiating out in public. Of course, we heard in the last couple of days the Saudis are also making the bold statement that they are prepared to put boots on the ground under American leadership, which then triggered the infamous response by uh, Sergei Lavrov, the uh, Russian foreign minister, that that would uh, trigger a world war because, in effect, we have Russian planes bombing uh, Saudi soldiers and possibly American special forces. And so in that sense, I think what, uh, what, what the Saudis are trying to press for is they are making very public their viewpoint because, of course, one of the, the third of the three items that has been agreed upon at Munich here is, of course, a political settlement, is a ne political negotiation about the future of Syria. And so the Saudis are basically, I think, putting everyone on notice that whatever comes out of the settlement, even though they don't, didn't want to prejudice the settlement by uh, demanding that Assad had to go before negotiations could start. They are making it very clear that by the end of these negotiations, uh, Assad will no longer be in power. And I think that the Russians are on board with that solution. I do not think that the Russians are really wedded to Assad himself, per se. The Russians are more wedded to the Syrian state institutions because they are panically afraid of a Libya-type sort of collapse of Syria uh, that could then essentially create an entire safe haven, as we saw in the late 90s in Afghanistan, for a bunch of Islamist radicals. And so in that sense, I think uh, there may be some give and take here, and the Russians may just offer Assad safe haven if they can be assured that uh, his essential clique and the institutions mm -hmm more or less remain in place. Okay, Christian, very interesting perspective. I'd like to thank you so much for that and for joining us live.